Greetings and welcome back as we continue in what we believe. Today we're going to talk about a book of the Bible that's probably the most difficult book of the Bible to read. And we at the staff, we get questions all the time about how do I read Revelation and what's going on with Revelation and, and how, I want to read Revelation but it's confusing and all those kinds of questions. And it can be confusing because understanding Revelation really takes a good understanding of the previous 65 books of the Bible. It takes an understanding and a grasp of what's going on in the previous part of the Bible to understand what God's saying about the end. That shouldn't discourage us from reading the Bible, reading Revelation. We need to remember a couple of things as we go through Revelation. We need to remember first in Revelation, Revelation is a genre called apocalyptic. And the problem is we don't see that in our everyday world. It's not prose and it's not um, narrative story like the other parts of the Bible. It's a different kind. It's apocalyptic talks in symbolism. It talks in images. It talks in uh, figurative language. We have to understand and read it that way. The other thing to understand about Revelation, and this is also a key point of it, is Revelation is not written linear. The first chapter of Revelation doesn't start at the beginning and the last chapter doesn't start at the end. What the book of Revelation does is the book of Revelation talks in circles, it talks in cycles as you might say. And what it does is it tells the story of the beginning to the end of time seven times over in a loop. And each time it's telling you a different piece of the puzzle. And so when you start looking at that, what you're getting is you're getting different pieces of the same story, not a linear story in being told out. It's also important to remember as we look in Revelation, is going in, is that all the numbers in Revelation are figurative. So the 144,000 doesn't mean 144,000. It has a meaning. Simple what 144,000 is, is it's God's church, the Old and New Testament church. And all those numbers in there have, a specific, have meanings in here, and it's important to look at those meanings. The next thing that's important to remember in is reading Revelation is there's things that happen on earth and there's things that happen in heaven. And there's great torment for people who were on earth. But as we read as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to remember we're not members of the earth. We're citizens of heaven. And so when it's talking about horrible things happening to people on earth, it's not talking about us. Because it's talking about the people who are, don't believe in Jesus Christ. Because our citizenship is in heaven. We need to remember that as we're reading Revelation. The most important thing to remember in Revelation And this is the hope that we have for today and the hope that we carry is that God is in control. Nothing happens in Revelation without God's permission and God setting the boundaries. And that God being in control and protecting His people in Revelation at the end times is God living and protecting us today. doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy because many times it's not. But we hang on to that eternal truth that God's in control. And we see that in Revelation, you can see that in our lives.